Now it's time to deploy 40 Manager on AWS EC2. This is our platform of choice in this demo because of the cost saving and ability to spawn on demand 40 Manager instance quickly on AWS EC2. Our two candidate devices today that we want to centrally manage with this 40 Manager appliance are going to be our two 40 gate firewalls running on the cloud and on-premises. Now these two firewalls are running on different platforms. One of them is physical and the other is a virtual machine on EC2. In addition to that, they are also running on different levels of firmware. So we can see the different challenges associated with running different versions and different firmware levels. And 40 Manager will have direct access to the cloud firewall as they live in the same VBC. So they are under the same network container and they have direct connectivity in between. And because our cloud firewall and on-premises firewall are connected using redundant VBN connection built in between them, this is something that we built previously in the advanced 40 gate course under the hybrid cloud video. And therefore the 40 manager in our case will be able to communicate and reach our on-premises firewall using the redundant VBN connections. And this will be our AWS cloud firewall running on demand instance on EC2 and powered by the latest and greatest firmware version 6.4. Actually, it's quite buggy for now, but that's usually the case with newer firmware version, even on general release. So we would suggest waiting for 6.4.1 or stick with 6.2.3, which is the older version and more stable for now. But we like to try, so for now we will use 6.4.0. And our on-premises 40 Wi-Fi device, which is just a 40 gate with integrated wireless capabilities. So think of it as a firewall and wireless router combined device. This device is still running on stable firmware release 6.2.0. And now we are ready to deploy our 40 manager VM on EC2. As of now, we have our lonely 40 gate virtual machine back from the introduction to 40 gate course. We will launch additional instance on the EC2 console. And this time we will search for 40 manager. And we will get six different AWS marketplace images. We expand this. We have first our bring your own license option, but we have no license. We have to look for the on demand instance below. So first we have a small option for a virtual machine that is capable of managing up to two devices, which is perfect for our case because we only have two devices right now. And you can weigh your option based on how many devices you need to manage. And the more devices you manage, the more expensive the software will be. And this option is costing us only one cent per hour. And if you buy this yearly, it's costing $1 for the whole year. So it's virtually free. And this is amazing. We will only need to pay for the EC2 compute. And this can be as low as $40. So our other option would include the 10, 30, 100, and you can go up to 500 devices if you have a very large environment. So let's go ahead and choose the smallest option. And if we zoom into here, we see that this costing us 5 cent per hour after adding the EC2 cost, which is not bad at all. And we will go ahead in the next page and we will have our VBC configuration. This is where we define our VBC, which subnet our interfaces will be. And uh, let's go ahead and just take a quick look on our VBC to make sure our architecture meets our need. And for our VBC, we are using our old network CIDR 10.10.0.0/16 which we also set up for use for two public subnet and one private subnet. And the only difference between those subnet is that the public subnet has a way to access the internet 
Therefore, it has a default route inside our VBC to a device called an internet gateway. And on the other hand, our private subnet has no public exposure to the internet. And therefore, they are protected and they can only talk to the internet or other resources outside of the private subnet through the firewall, which translate to a default route to a firewall interface in the private subnet. So this is back from our old setup. What we are adding today is we are adding the 40 manager instance and we will build it mainly in the public subnet so the device can be able to talk to the internet. This is required for things like license, updates and 40 guard services. So we can choose either public one or public two. We can choose public one to match our private subnet and we can optionally add another interface in the private subnet. This is in case we need it in the future. Now we have our main interface in the public subnet and the secondary interface in the private subnet. So now we are ready to go ahead and launch our instance. And as with the other 40 in the product, we do not need a key pair for this. So we can skip this part and launch our instance. And in a few seconds, it will be up and ready. We already got two IPs from both subnets, the private subnet and the public subnet. Now we just need to assign a public IP address to our instance so we can easily manage it from the cloud. The process for this is to reserve a new elastic IP and assign it to a network interface. In this case, we have already one for the 40 gate, but before we assign the other one to the 40 manager, we have to give some alias to our interfaces because in general, they would not show us any description and it will be very confusing. So we can just look which interface for the 40 manager was built on the public subnet, match it with the 40 gate and just add up a description like 40 manager public. This way we can easily identify this interface from EC2 and assign public IPs to it correctly. And once this is done, we can choose our new public IP, choose to send it to a network interface and choose our 40 manager public after we added the alias. Now we can create this association and now our IP address will be allowing us to access our 40 manager through the GUI using HTTPS. We can just log in with the default username admin and the password that is always generated will be our instance ID. So this is something we can easily grab from EC2 and just copy this instance ID associated with our 40 manager. And once you base this password and change it, now we will see the main login screen of 40 manager and it's just a simple organized management suite that consists of different sections like device management, policy management, and all the other section down to the system settings of the device itself. On the system settings pane, we can see the device interfaces like port one and port two, our main information like the host name on the device, the serial number, and the firmware version. Now this appliance looks like it's still running version 6.2.3, but since we need to manage our 40 gate on AWS EC2, which is running version 6.4, we have to update this 40 manager first to 6.4 to be able to support this device. Also under network, we have port one configuration. This is our public interface IPs and permission. Also routing table, packet capture, this is just a very minimized version of a network configuration page you would find on a 40 gate unit. So now we can verify internet connectivity by binging some online IP. We will try 8.8.8.8 and we are getting a response. We have internet connectivity. Now for board two, which is our interface on the private subnet, we will notice that no IP address was acquired. In this case, AWS did assign an IP address for that interface inside the AWS software, but the 40 manager is not able to read this or is not configured to do it correctly. So if we try to use this interface in the future, we have to manually go 
to our EC2 and copied IP address and subnet mask and then configure it manually on this interface because 40 manager and 40 analyzer do not support DHCP on their interfaces. Now our strategy to update our firmware should always start by taking a fresh backup of 40 manager database. Unlike 40 gate backups, which are lightweight text files, 40 manager backup consists of much larger database and many objects depending on how many devices you manage and how deeply configured they are. Also take extra security measure by adding a password to your backup file since it contains information that is related to your environment. And once the backup file downloads, this will be downloaded in a database format. This will cover all the databases content inside our 40 manager. Now, in order for us to reverse this process, we first have to make sure we are running the same firmware version. So if we wanna use this backup file to launch a new instance, of 40 manager with the same replica of information inside our main setup or for disaster recovery situation we can just spawn another 40 manager from that same code level 6.2.3 in this case and upload this database file to it using the restore function and input your password and that's it now you have a replica of your environment and now that we are backed up and ready to download our firmware file we are first need to log into our 40 net support portal and do a first time registration for our device. And this will allow us to download the firmware updates from it. And from the top menu, we just need to choose register your device. We're just gonna input some simple information like the serial number of the device, the AWS account ID to verify our account. And finally, once we read and agree to this, we can finish our setup process. Now you might need to contact customer service by phone or email to get your account to activate properly and have access to the firmware section. And once this is ready, we will choose firmware updates from the support portal navigation. And we will look for the product of 40 manager. So we have first our release notes. We can just jump to download and we need to look for version 6 and in the sub version this will be 6.4 and the only option we have right now is 6.4.0 so those will be all the update files for all the applicable physical devices and virtual machine versions that support this specific firmware version and we need to look for AWS on demand 40 manager instance to be able to download the correct update file this file will be in dot out format so we can just go back to our 40 manager, choose to update our update file. So the 40 manager will upload the file first and then we'll start upgrading itself. We can utilize EC2 to actually be inside our system screenshot. And this will show us that our instance is in the booting process right now. And on the system log, we can see more details like the upgrade components and in a few seconds, we will see that the 40 manager system is running code level 6.4.0. And that's how you deploy backup and update 40 manager on AWS EC2. Thank you for watching.